So the um, torsion one, question one. A process for refining sugar yields up to one ton of pure sugar per day. But the actual amount produced is a random variable because the random variable because of machine breakdowns and other slowdowns. Suppose that X has density function given by F of X. Um, this notation here is a, taking note that it's not the only variable of interest. And we call it the marginal. So this marginal here, marginal density function is 2x when x is between 0 and 1 and 0 otherwise. The company is paid at the rate of $300 per ton um, for the refined sugar. But it also has a fixed overhead cost of $100 per day. That's a daily profit in hundreds of dollars is y is equal to 3x minus 1. Find the probability density function for y. These questions, these 300, 100, they don't mean much in the solving. The simple question here is, given that y is equal to 3x minus 1, find the probability density function for y given that the marginal of f is known. Since y depends on x, so then how do you go to, how do you get the PDF of y? If you know the PDF of x, where y depends on. A bit of some English. So now, So we're saying shit one. Um, question one. So what we are given is this guy is equal to two X we are running from here and zero. Otherwise, we're also given that y is equal to 3x minus 1. So the first thing we should do is to find the marginal of f. I mean, is to find the um, It's find the cumulative function of F. So the cumulative margin of F. Because in the cumulative margin of F, which is the function Px less or equal to x, this guy is dedicated to Py less or equal to y. And then we know that this is Fy, which we just integrate, we integrate this capital F, I mean, we differentiate the capital F with respect to y to get the, the function that you're looking for, the PDF of y. So from the F given, we'll go to the bigger F and then connect it to the bigger Rfy then differentiate to get the smaller fy given the root function. So given this function, we are saying, oh, how then do we get at the CDF of f? It's just the function x, this or equal to the small x, uh, which is the integral from zero to x. And then for the sake of um, avoiding Miscalculations in terms of variables, we we'll use a different variable whether it is x there. So we can use the variable, even you can use u, u. So that then it becomes a bit easy for us. 
So then we'll say from zero to X, we are dealing with two U. U. So to integrate this, of course we get two U squared over two, running from zero to X, and the two will cancel. So we just have X, X squared there. Of course, this guy is still defined from zero, let's say, to X, let's say, to one. And then now, x to you for easy integration because the x has been taken up at the limit. Oh, okay. <clears throat> then now we go to what you're looking for. So we're saying for PDF, for PDF of y, we know something already. We know that y is 3x minus y. So it depends on. It depends on uh, the y depends on x. So then uh, we get the bigger y, the bigger fy, uh, which is the probability of having the y uh, less or equal to y. But what is y? Y is defined as what? As 3x minus 1 is here. So you pick it. You say, oh, so I have 3x minus 1 less or equal to y. And then uh, what we have here is just x. So we solve for x on the left of this p here inside. So we'll say this is equal to the probability. You know, when I'm solving for x here, you take one the other side and divide by three. So x will remain y plus one over three. That's what will happen there. Okay, then um, from there now, you go back to your F, because this thing we have is the same as, um, it's now the same as F, X, and then where there's, remember there was X here, so now we have y plus one over three. So this thing we found here, x squared, is f x x is equal to x squared. But remember, this guy is a probability. I mean, is the um, the probability that x is less or equal to small x is equal to this. Now what we have done is that we have just replaced where there is a small x here. We've put y, we now have y plus one over three. So it means that we're going to have that small, that capital X less equal to y plus one over three. So meaning that wherever we took this X, which came here under the square is where we're going to take. So what we are doing here is the same as this. F of X is equal to four, four X plus one. Then they say, find F of two. What do we do? You have four, two plus one. So, now we are finding f of y plus one over three. So we'll go where there is x and the place y plus one over three plus one. But remember, this is not the f that you are dealing with. Our f now is uh, is this one. This is our f. So where there is x, we we'll take uh, we we'll take y plus one over three. But then it's squared, so we also have to square this guy. So that we get y plus one uh, squared over nine. We're not done. Remember when we said it's defined, we gave it where it is defined. So we must do the same. So we have zero less or equal to x is now y plus one over three, which is less than or equal to one. Then we solve this now. So we cross multiply, you have zero less or equal to y plus one less or equal to three. Then you take one the other side, you get negative one less or equal to y, less or equal to three minus one, you get two. So our function uh, will be defined for this guy. But then now we are almost there. The only thing remaining to find f, um, to find fy, fy of y, 
is just to differentiate now. This guy is found as a derivative of the capital guy. Uh, of the capital guy Fy, Y. But remember, we have found this as, we have found this as Y plus one squared over nine. So we get two down, and then y plus one over nine. For which, for which values of y, negative one less than equal to y, less than equal to two. And that's how you get the function there. So this is the PDF, the probit basic function, which is the probit marginal basic function of y. That's how we answer question one. But there's a bit of some calculus in this course. In fact, so many of it. Okay. Questions? Excuse me, sir. Uh -huh. Can you, can you run through uh, the steps again? So the steps, first, once you have a function f, and they ask you for this very function, but in the form of y. When y has been given as a function, depending on the variable x. The good news is that you have information about the x, which is here. So you work out the x by finding the CDF of x. The CDF of x, um, you find it by integrating. Of course, on the lowest limit, all the way up to x. This you must remember from, is it the y? Or if you have forgotten, I can remind you. That's how you get the, the CDF. So you have this as a CDF, this formula here. We change the variable from x to u inside and du here, so that you can be able to do the integration easily and then substitute x because x as a variable has been taken as a limit. After you integrate now, you have two u, which is just a function which you had there, just place it here for integration purposes, you get u squared. Then you substitute x minus zero, so you get x squared there. Yeah? From zero up to one or zero otherwise, still the same thing. Then for PDF of y now, what will you do? You have your y as a function depending on x. The other parts are constant. So you bring it in the CDF. So what you find first, since you have a CDF for, F, for x, you also find the CDF for y. The CDF for y, f of y, y, is a probability of capital Y raised equal to the small one. But this capital Y is what we have here as 3x minus 1. So where there's a capital Y, you put 3x minus 1. Less or equal to Y, the same Y here. Then you solve for X. Make X a subject in here. And you ensure that your X must not just be an X. It must remain as an X of this kind so that you can then use this CDF of X. So you come here and do 3x minus 1, this will equal to y. Then check one the other side, divide by 3, the x has remained alone. This x less or equal, just like we have this x less or equal. So whatever is here is what we have here. OK? So you see, when we had x here, we went all the way up there and got that guy. We don't have to go through the integration. We have already done the integration. So what you do is you just put that x. 
So now what you have where well, is that x is y plus one over three. So you substitute y plus one over three is equal to that. So we get this, but then we know that this guy is f of y in terms of y now. Let's see f of y y defined from zero where there is x, we place this guy again. And then once you have this, then now you solve for y so that you, get, you just have a variable y with limits there. Then from there, you are now looking for the PDF of f of y. So the marginal probability function of y, so you get it in this form, you differentiate the CDF of y to get the PDF of y. That's how it is obtained. So nice and easy, except it all depends on, on the, it depends on that thing. Okay. Another question. Question two. No. Question two. Let x have the probability density function given by f of x, x plus one over two from negative one, the circle x to the circle one, find the density function of, of y. <laughs> so find the density function for y is equal to x squared. Okay, so we're now at question two. Question two, we have f x x is equal to x plus one over two. Um, for negative one is equal to x, this is equal to one, and zero arrows. So we go, same procedure, step one, find f x x. Two, um, find f y y. Then three, um, you now find f y y via differentiating f y y so in step one we are saying f x x is equal to the integral negative one to x and then here we'll do f u du then you substitute so you get some negative one x uh, u over two du which is equal to how do you integrate this we get u um over two plus u everything over two and then you lock it 
so negative one to x. This guy is the same as one over two, the one outside, and then x squared uh, over two, x minus, so when we take one, negative one squared there will still be one, so we get one, two, and then minus negative one, so it becomes plus one. So you lock it here, so that now we get x squared over four, uh, plus x over two, uh, negative half plus one, that is half, half multiplied that is one, four. This guy is from negative one, let's say the Then now we should find We should now find the other case. Second part, f y y, which is equal to um, the probability y. Let's say equal to y. Uh, not forgetting that this guy is the probability x. Let's say x. So now, what is y? Um, we are given that y is equal to x squared. So this is what you always bring when you start doing this. So where is this guy? We now bring in x squared, let's equal to y. But if x is squared, the only way you can have x alone here is when you do the square root of x. So you square root, you square root. As a result, when you square root, you always get plus or minus. So you get the negative root y. Uh, less or equal to the x, which is less or equal to the positive root y. That's how it happens there. Then what else do you do? You now say, oh, okay, uh, you are now uh, talking about y is equal to x squared in relation with the root. So here this thing becomes root y. Oh, negative root y. Now then you understand that you're coming from x squared. And you're talking of negative one here positive one here, then you switch. So you'd move this, this guy, you switch it from this angle to this angle. So once you switch it, you can no longer talk about negative one because if you square it, it becomes one. So you only have one, one on both sides. So it means that you start from zero then all the way up to one uh, because the y has become one now. And if I get in the point. Or if if we had to reverse also the one that is this side so that you have a negative one, to say when x is one, I'm going to get plus one or negative one, which is okay. So you have negative one to zero and zero to one. But these guys are the same, okay? Because they are the same, the change of limits will then require that you just do one of them here. So you just double the probability and make it x be less or equal to the root of y. This one is a good one to pick because it fits what we are looking for, where x is less or equal to the small x. So now we have x uh, less or equal to the root of y. Well, this guy is equal to what? Two, we already have this. Where is it? It's here, okay. Because this thing is the same as now saying fx, the root of y. So whenever there is uh, 
whatever it is x, you are now taking root y squared over two, I mean over four, plus root y over two plus one over four. So that this thing becomes two down there, you get y over two then plus root y over two plus one over two. Plus one over two. And then you differentiate this. So therefore, to get, so now the limits have changed. And the limits have changed from negative one. This is equal to y. This is equal to. Um, in fact, this is root y here. This is equal to one. So that then they will just move from zero. This is equal to y. This is equal to one. So just take a piece. Or you take another piece down. Then to find. What you're looking for now, which is f y y, well, this guy should be capital, is then just a derivative to respect y of f y y, which is equal to you differentiate this guy, so you get one over two uh, plus the root of y is just y to the power half, so you get half y uh, negative half of course there's an over two down here uh, plus zero when you arrange this it becomes a um, becomes one over four the root of y plus one over two of course zero that's like at y that's like at one this becomes the CDF. Uh, oh, let me see. Oh, no, no, no. Somewhere we made a mistake. This two is not supposed to be there. This two here. This two is not supposed to be here. This two. So let's make a correction there. So do quick correction. When we do the expansion, two times this guy, we get a half. Then two times this guy, we get just a root one. And then here, we get a half. So what we have is uh, FYY is equal to Y over two plus root y, okay, just root y, okay. Then plus half, good. And from there now, we have uh, the derivative of this guy, f y y is equal to d uh, dy f y y, right. which is equal to what? which is equal to one over two plus half y negative half, which you can simplify as one over two plus one over two root y. For zero, this is equal to y, this is equal to one. So, the simplest way of knowing the change of limits thing is you keep in mind that every time you're moving from the root of y, I mean, once you have x squared is equal to y, the limits, when you switch limits, you find yourself with 0 to, to 1. Because this square here makes you have one value on the right and on the left. So then you, you restrict it from 0 and then operate with 1. That's how you get the, the function there.
So we are within the first 40 minutes, which is almost ending. So if there's a question you can ask. On the change of limits, we have um, we're coming from x squared, which is an upright graph, like that. Then you go to this is this guy is y is equal to x squared. When you switch, you solve for x. You say uh, the root of y. You know, we are dealing with something that comes out like this. Now, for it to be plus or minus, it will touch down. If I just at the root of y, I would just go with the upper part here. So I'll just go with the upper part here. Then the plus or minus, so it come down. But look, these graphs are symmetric. Whatever is you have up is what you have down. So it is restricted. Just operate with one. So run from zero. From zero, this is zero here. To one. Because when x is one, uh, you get, get one here, you get one as y. So when x is one, you have one is equal to the root of y. So when you square and square, you get y is equal to one. When x is negative one, you're talking the same thing. Negative one is equal to root y. So you have square, square, you get y is equal to one. That's why then we restrict it from zero to one because you cannot have one less equal to y less equal to one. That's like a point. So you go back to zero and break your interval into two and you run from zero to one. That's the basic principle there from x squared to root one. Okay, so we can log out and find a way to get back.